Okay, so I can go ahead and get started. Um, this is the home window. It's what appears when you open up MapTitude. And we have a few options here. We have new map my data table or spreadsheet, which we'll be using today. New map of my territory data, which we actually went over on Monday in the territories webinar. Uh, new map of the United States, which will just open a blank map of the US. New demographic map, which will allow you to browse through a bunch of pre-made demographic maps. There are a lot more demographic maps that you can make than just the ones that are shown in this uh, when you choose this option, but this is just a bunch of pre-made ones that we have ready to go. You can also open older maps. Uh, you can open a geographic file here. And you can also open an existing workspace. So if you have an existing workspace, something you've already been working on in Maptitude, you can open it with this side of the pane. I'll be choosing new map of my data table or spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet in my training folder. It's my local establishments.xlsx here. I'll right click it and choose open so everyone can see it before I import. Um, if you have attended the basics webinar before, you're probably familiar with this sheet. It is a list of breweries in Texas. Uh, you see I have longitude and latitude, although we don't need these, I do have them. Uh, I have the name of each location, the address, city, state, and zip code, and then I have a bunch of additional information as well, uh, form of phone number, URL, other sorts of things. Uh, general formatting for sheets when you import them, you want to have the address, city, state, and zip all in their own columns. You don't need all this information, you can make do with some of it, you could have just a list of zip codes if you wanted to. Um, but the more information you provide to, the better it's going to be at locating your addresses. Any additional data you have, I recommend keeping them in separate columns, although you don't have to, um, but it'll make it easier if you decide to use filters or selection sets, um, thematic maps, anything like that. And again, you don't need longitude and latitude, but I do have them in my case. So I'm going to choose this sheet. On the first step, we're gonna match up our geographic fields with their respective matching geography. So my address field that I had in my spreadsheet, I wanna match that up to address. I wanna match my city field up to city, my state field up to state, et cetera. All of my stuff matches up. If I scroll down, we'll see longitude and latitude at the bottom, also matching up correctly with X and Y. So all this looks good. I'm gonna be starting out by locating the records by address, zip code, or city. All of these options that say locate on them will drop an individual pin for each record of the spreadsheet, as you can see here. We'll talk more about these show boundaries options later. Uh, these essentially join your data to whatever uh, geographic layer you've chosen here. So I could join it to the zip code layer if I wanted to. Uh, but for now, we're going to choose locate records by address, zip code, or city. Hit next. I'm going to be importing my data. We won't be linking data today. Uh, in order to link, you need to have a unique ID field associated with your data, which I do not have. Uh, linking allows you to make changes to the spreadsheet, and then if you choose Update Linked Records from the Map menu, it will update with the changes you've made to your spreadsheet. So it's a nice way of keeping uh, the spreadsheet data and the Maptitude data linked together. Uh, but I won't be doing any of that, so I'll just choose Import. And finally, I can choose Type of Theme and Display Labels if I want to. I won't be using a theme yet, so I'll be leaving this on none. I will be displaying labels, and I'm going to use the name field to label each of my locations. We're going to skip the type of analysis. Uh, we won't be doing any of this today. So now it's just running through my sheet and plotting all those records. We see that it located all of my points. And it's going to display a map with the records from my spreadsheet. And you can see they're all labeled with their respective names. Okay, next I'm going to cover navigating the map. So we have zoom options here, zoom in, zoom out, pan. You may see this toolbar floating somewhere on your screen, over here or over here. Uh, you can always dock any of these toolbars by clicking and dragging them to the top. You can dock them anywhere on the screen. You can dock them at the side, the bottom, or the top like I've done here. If you click on zoom in, 
and you click where you want to zoom into, it's going to zoom you into that area. If you click zoom out and click where you want to zoom away from, it's going to zoom you away. If you click on pan and click and drag the map, you can move the map around. There are shortcuts on your mouse for all of these things. So if you scroll up on your mouse wheel, you can zoom in. If you scroll down on your mouse wheel, you can zoom out. And with any tool selected, if you press in your mouse wheel, so click it in, you can drag the map around. So with these mouse wheel shortcuts, you don't have to have any specific tools selected. It'll work with any tool selected. So even if I have like select by pointing chosen, if I zoom in, it's still going to zoom me in. Or if I scroll up, it's still going to zoom me in. If I scroll down, it's still going to zoom me out. And if I press in the mouse wheel and drag, it's still going to drive the map around. If you want to go to the last zoom level you were at, you could choose undo zoom. And if you want to revert to the original scope of the map, you could choose undo all zoom. You can also click on the info tool and click individual points to see more information about them. You can also hover over points with any tools selected to see more information about them. You can adjust what comes up when you hover over points by right clicking on your layer of points, choosing choose hover fields and changing what pops up when you hover over. So if I want to make sure the address, city, state, and zip all show up when I hover over the point, I can add all those records to the right side and click OK. And now when I hover over a point, all that information should show up. OK, I'm going to zoom in here a bit to the next portion. So the next thing I'm going to cover, assuming people would like to see it, is how to display multiple fields of data in the label. So right now you can see I'm only displaying the name of each location. If you want though, you can display multiple fields. So I could do like the name, phone number, and uh, hours if I wanted to. I could do the full address if I wanted to. If you would like to see how to do that, feel free to hit yes here, and I will go over it provided people would like to see it. Okay, it looks like people would like to see that, so I'll go ahead and go over it now. To adjust the labels for any layer in particular, you're going to find that layer in the Display Manager. In that case, this is my Sheet 1 layer. You're going to click on the Labels button next to it. That's this small white tag. Specifically, to add multiple fields, we're going to click on the Field dropdown. So this is what controls what we're labeling the points with, and we're going to choose multiple fields. I'm going to add any fields that I want to the right side. So this is pretty much the same as our hover fields uh, box here. So we'll do the name, we'll do the phone number, and we'll do the hours. You choose a color for each one. So I'll choose, we'll keep the, uh, the name on blue. We'll change the phone number to a slightly darker blue, and we'll do like a green for the hours. You can change the size here as well, whether or not you want them bolded. Uh, you can adjust things like how labels overlap, how they auto scale, uh, the background of the labels. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with the labels dialog box. Uh, I won't be covering much of it today, but just so you're aware, the basics down here, uh, we have the option to change the font. You can change the sizing. Uh, if you have colors that you want to associate with the labels, you can choose those here. Uh, and things like bold and italics are here as well. Once we hit OK, those are all going to update. 
If you want to change point styles, that's also done through the Display Manager. So again, find the layer that you want to change the styles for. My Sheet 1 layer will again be our example. Click on the respective style next to it, so that's the blue dot, and just change that blue dot to whatever you want. And you can choose your own color image as well. So if you have your own custom image you want to browse for, choose color image up here. Um, but I'll just make them in squares, and I'll make them a bit larger. And all those will update. And lastly, if I want to rename that layer, I can right click on sheet one layer and choose rename. And I'm just going to rename it breweries. The display manager itself is pretty important as well. Um, we have the ability to toggle on and off all these layers that you see here. So if I want to hide things like streets, I just uncheck street and all the streets will be hidden. If I want to show something like zip codes, click on the red X next to five digit zip code and all the zip codes will show up. You can hide the breweries as well. You can hide any layer or show any layer that's in this display manager. So next I'm gonna add another spreadsheet to this map. In my example, I will be adding the same spreadsheet again, uh, but you're gonna use the same steps to add a new spreadsheet if you want. So to add a second spreadsheet to your map, go to the map menu and choose add table or spreadsheet to a map. And this is going to take us through the same wizard we went through to import the sheet initially. So pick the sheet, match up our geographic fields. This time I'll be choosing show zip code boundaries with my data attached. So this is going to aggregate my data at the zip code level and it's going to join that data to the zip codes. This is useful for making things like heat maps based on zip codes um, or any other type of geography really. You would just choose the other option here, uh, but I'll be using zip codes. Uh, so heat maps based on zip codes, pattern maps, that sort of thing. I'm going to import again, and I'm going to choose a color theme, and I'm going to make that theme based on the number of records in the sheet. So this will color my zip codes a different color when there are more zip or more uh, more breweries in that particular zip code. I also do want to display labels for the zip code, and I'll be labeling the zip codes with the number of records that are in the zip code. I'll hit finish. And we have our initial scope again. We are too far zoomed out for the zip codes to show. So you see this red magnifying glass next to the zip code layer. Uh, that just means that the zip codes are auto scaled off right now. So let's zoom back into Dallas. We see those zip codes now toggle on. And in each zip code, we have the respective number, although it's very small. So I may also want to adjust that number of uh, number of breweries in each zip code label. So we're going to find the five digit zip code layer. We see a my data set under it with the labels lit up. That means labels are on for this set. So click that. And again, same as we did before, just size it up a bit. We could change the color. And that should be good enough. Now we can see all those labels. One last thing I didn't cover uh, is the working layer. And that is because our working layer the entire time was our breweries layer. But if we do want to make changes to another layer, for example, if we want to adjust the color theme at all, if we want to change, do anything in regards to selection sets, we do have to make that layer the working layer. You could set your working layer with this drop down at the top left. So if I want to do something to the five digit zip code layer, I should choose it as the working layer. Uh, alternatively, you can right click on the layer and choose make working layer. Uh, but now that we have five digit zip code as our working layer, we can do something like click on color theme, go to the styles tab, and if we want to adjust any styles for this theme, we can.